Good afternoon. How's everyone doing? My name is Jamie Dorley. Welcome to the Wine and Wellness Week. This is March Madness 2015. And today's workshop you're going to be attending is on essential fatty acids, omega-3s, krill oil, flaxseed oil, vegetarian 3, 6, and 9, and enterically coated fish oil. So have you guys all been to a wellness week before? Yeah. Okay, welcome back. Got some new people in the back. So if you haven't been to a wellness week before, I'll give you a quick overview of what you get to experience. So the whole idea is that you're going to have a positive wellness experience, right? Such as eating healthy food, listen to a workshop, try some new vitamins. When you have a wellness experience, it's very positive, right? And if you look back in the last 10 years, do you have more wellness experiences now or did you when you started? More now, right? Maybe you go to a gym, maybe you go to Silver Sneakers, aerobic class, walking with a friend, hiking, eating well, whatever it may be. So the whole idea of Wellness Week is you get to try, everyone eat some free food today? Free workshops, free literature, free samples, where your healthcare professionals answer any questions, and it's all free. If you want to buy anything, everything's on sale this week at deep discounts. It's a pretty good deal, right? So what do you guys need to keep doing? Coming back to the events, right? And bringing one person with you each time, right? That's all you gotta do. Because then we can keep having these events. So, if you need to make an appointment, you can do so with any of the healthcare professionals here, right? And if not, keep coming to the wellness events, okay? So if you have any questions on what we're talking about, I'll a answer them during the workshop. If it's about anything else, then we can talk about it when we're done, fair enough? So you got to realize that why do we need essential fats? Why? Because they make up every cell in our body. So that's why we, they work on so many different body systems. The joints, right? They help lubricate the joints, bring nutrients to the joints it needs. What about for the brain? Well, 60% of your brain is fat, and that's mostly essential fatty acids. In particular, fish oil and DHA, right? but also great for the heart. It's great for the immune system. It has so many properties because it becomes part of your cells and there's also processes in the body that either create inflammation or reduce. The essential fatty acids reduce inflammation. So you gotta realize a lot of things are affected by, including the endocrine, the hormones, the heart, structure, immune, and neurological. So it may even be more important than a multivitamin. It may be more important than a multi. So if you're not taking an essential fatty acid, you need to make sure you start taking them, and you take them every day. This is food, right? But you have to eat so much fish to get the amount you can get in. And the problem is, you guys have heard of this before, right? This silent inflammation. You heard silent inflammation? Inflammation, not maybe in a joint, but throughout the body, the body comes inflamed. It leads to most chronic disease, such as what? Heart attack, still the number one killer. Cancer, arthritis, autoimmune. You guys get the idea, right? So it's a silent inflammation, and the cause of this is mostly the diet. We eat a lot of pro-inflammatory foods, bad fats, right? So the solution is going to be to increase your, what's EPA, DHA? Fish oil. If you learn anything today, fish oil is made up of two parts, EPA and DHA. EPA reduces inflammation, DHA becomes part of your nervous system, your brain, your eyes. So we have EPA and DHA, right? The EPA is an anti-inflammatory, and the DHA is for the nervous system and the brain and the eyes. So anytime now you look at fish oil, you got to look at how much EPA and DHA it is in there, right? Just like the proof of the alcohol. How much alcohol is in that bottle? How much EPA and DHA is in that fish oil, right? Yeah. So that's the solution right there. 
they're anti-inflammatory, right? So just by taking fish oil and eating fish and nuts and seeds and nut butters and safflower oil, coconut oil, right? These are all good fats that we need to incorporate into our body because they're anti-inflammatory. And here's what happens, there's your cell, right? I told you the fish oil becomes part of every cell in your body, right? Every cell. And when your cells have enough of EPA and DHA, they have enough omega what? Three. When they have enough omega-3, they got a lot of fluid. They look real strong. It's like a grape, right? When you have heart disease, smoker, um, bad diet, aging rapidly, your cells become more like a raisin. Does that make sense? So you want your cells to look like a raisin or a grape? And the number one thing you can do is incorporate fish oils every day in your diet. They need to be taken in a supplement form, but they are food-based. So they always come first on the supplement list. In our house, we put this on the grocery list, right? The fish oil, the protein powder, the fiber, the colors, those are all food-based supplements. Why do we take them in food-based? Because we got the right ingredients in there without any of the things we don't want. So are we ready? This is what happens to your cell. There's an article in JAMA. Anyone know what the Journal of American Medical Association is, JAMA? This is the Journal for American Medical Doctors. It's a monthly journal. The doctors are supposed to read it. Not only read it, learn it, and remember it. It's not always the case because in the JAMA article, it's all the way back in 1995, they showed when you take omega-3s, you reduce the risk of heart attacks by up to 90%. There it is. So we only have to get to here. And we can get to there, and we call it changing your oil, in about four months. Four months you can get there. So if you take omega-3D, if you want to know how to change your oil and reduce your risk by 90%, you take omega-3D four a day for four months. After that, you can probably take two to four a day. Four a day for four months. And it was proven in this study right here. There's been a lot of research reviewing the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Omega-6 could be from animal or vegetarian source. Some of it has some good properties, like flaxseed oil. Some of it doesn't, like hydrogenated oils, right? Animal fats. So you need the right types of omega-6s, plus you need a good ratio. So we need more omega-3s in the diet and from supplementation for all the different body systems. Some people may need the flaxseed oil or the omega-6s if they're vegetarian, right? For skin, flax works really well for hormone levels. So there are some properties of flax that we like that have some advantage, even though it's an omega-6. I said, if you're vegetarian, you have skin issues, hormone issues, flax may have its benefits, even though it's an omega-6, okay? The standard American diet in the U.S. has changed in the last 50 years more than it did in the previous 10,000. So for thousands of years, people were basically eating the same types of foods. You know, hunting, gathering, farming, that type of thing. Then what happened is you have these started making this product. It's not junk food. What is it? It's just junk. There's no food in it. And what happens is we've all been guilty of this, right? It's convenient, it's cheap, and it's addicting. Yeah, it's all acid. If food's not alive, it's all acid, right? So it's happened, that's what's happened with our diet in the last 50 years. Yeah, absolutely. It's the way the food's processed. It's made in the factory. It's bad for you. Well, not, not always, but yeah, if it's, if it's being made there, yes. If it's processed through a factory, not always, right? You've got to process vegetables somewhere. But if they're making it there, it's a product. 
and they get paid big bucks, these flavoring experts, to make the flavor taste good and, more importantly than tasting good, be very addictive to your brain. You ever hear people say, I need my Doritos, I need my chips, I need my cigarettes, coffee, soda, whatever it is? It's addicting, right? And what's the number one food, uh, number one thing we're addicted to in our country? Number one, sugar. You have a question, hon? Good idea, thanks. So we're gonna talk about this right now because it's not only where the oil is sourced, it's how it's processed before it gets to you. Because I think we all agree that if you go 200 miles off the coast and go 200 feet down, it's been proven, they find hundreds of chemicals, right? So it's become ubiquitous with the oceans. So you have to be really careful about the type of fish you get and then more importantly about the refinement. So a lot of our fish oil is from sardines and anchovies, but not all of them. I'll go through them at the end. For fish oil, there's no U.S. standard. So we follow an international standard called IFAS, International Fish Oil Standard. And I'm going to go through what that means and how important that is. So there's really six steps. So I'm removing heavy metals to making it more potent, refining the oil, to getting rid of things like PCBs and contaminants, and then more importantly, having a third party testing of the oil when it's done. Because the people that test the oil, they don't get paid to make it or distribute it, they get paid to test it. So it doesn't matter if it passes or fails. And that's why we have third party testing done on the oil because the oil is number one, probably the number one product that could go bad. So if an oil comes back up on you, it means it went rancid, either somewhere along the manufacturing procedure, they didn't clean the oil properly, or it got rancid once you purchased it. The second problem is the oil may be good, but you could have problems digesting fats. Who would have problems digesting fats? People with no gallbladder, fatty liver, overweight, needs to lose body fat, cardiovascular disease. So a lot of people in our society have problems even with digestion. So you're gonna have issues where you're having challenges digesting fats. That may be a second reason why it repeats or you burp it back up. So this to show you we've been testing this oil since 2011. So this shows you the amount of the ingredient. Vitamin D, label says 500, we're at 810. So the vitamin D is much higher than what's even on the label. Look at the EPA, it says 450, you're getting about 512. DHA 330 comes in about 420. So naturally occurring ingredients like fish oil, there's a little bit of a range there, but always gonna be higher so that even on the low end of that range will still meet label claim, okay? Here's all the tests for microbes, heavy metals, peroxidation values. There's a newer one from 2014. Again, looked at the vitamin D content, EPA, DHA, microbiology, heavy metals. So we also include vitamin D in the fish oil. Why is that? Well, it's an epidemic right now of vitamin D deficiency, right? Has anyone had the vitamin D tested and knows what it is? What is it? I think 80. 80? Okay. Great. Yeah, it's fantastic. We're going to show you because if you look at vitamin D level across the top, it goes from 6 to 68. Everyone see that? And then on the left are diseases that you can prevent once the vitamin D level is at that level, right? So if you look at it, all cancers alone, if your vitamin D level gets to hers, over 75% prevention. Dr. Edwin Lee, who's an endocrinologist, functional medicine doc, one of the only ones in the country, he did his residency at the University of Pittsburgh, currently has a private practice in Orlando, Florida, and is one of the accounts for nutritional frontiers. 
He says uh, once vitamin D levels get to 70, he doesn't see any cancer. He doesn't see any autoimmune conditions. He doesn't see any depression. So it's only one variable, but a very important variable because you don't have vitamin D level at 80 and not eat healthy and take care of yourself and smoke and drink and take a lot of medication, what happened? We've seen vitamin D levels as low as seven. DMDs want 30 and higher. We like about 70 and higher. How high is too high? Eh, probably 100 is about enough. So vitamin D, we put inside the fish oil so you get an extra bonus, an extra value, an extra key nutrient. You may need more in addition, right? You take four fish oil, omega-3D a day, how much vitamin D is that? What's four times five? 20. 200. 2,000. Yeah, it's 500 per cap. So four times 500 is 2,000. So you get 2,000 IUs just by taking your fish oil. You see how in Nutritional Frontiers you get better results because your compliance is better and it's a better value? You can take out too much anything, you know, too much oxygen would kill you, right? Interesting, hold on, let me answer your question. You asked it, right? So can you take too much fish oil? My answer is, you can take too much anything. Everything on the planet has toxicity levels and therapeutic levels, even silver, right? Yeah, so anything can have therapeutic levels and toxic levels. You ever hear of anybody dying from drinking too much water? Yes. How's that possible? Water's so good, you gotta drink so much water. You know, your body's 70% water, but you can drown and you can shut down kidneys if you drink too much water. So there's too much of anything. The largest amount I know that somebody ever took a fish oil was the guy that was one of the miners that got hurt due to oxygen deprivation, right? And he had brain damage, heart, and liver. And they gave him 25,000 grams or 25 grams of fish oil. That'd be about, that'd be about 30 of these a day. Yeah. Again, bigger challenge, bigger intervention. The guy had brain damage. What do we always think about brain damage? Can we fix it? No. Irreversible. Yeah. So they did an experiment with him. He went up to 25 grams of fish oil per day. And what happened? He made a full recovery. That's what you're supposed to say. Wow! He made a full recovery. Wow. We're getting better. Nobody's sleeping anymore. You gotta learn something if you invest your time here, right? So can you take too much? If you're on blood thinners, yes. But this guy took 25 grams. I think your finances would inhibit you before you take too much, okay? So that's why we added vitamin D right to the formula. Here's all the diseases that are associated with suboptimal levels of vitamin D. So look at, of course we always thought of musculoskeletal, right? You need vitamin D for your bones, right? We knew that, and your muscle. We knew you needed it for brains. It was always talked about brains and bones. That's what you need vitamin D for. And what happened a couple years ago? Ah, science changed. And it says, wow, we didn't realize the immune system had all these parking spots, otherwise known as receptor sites, right, for vitamin D. So when vitamin D's come buzzing by the immune cells, now they can stick to it and turn things on in the immune cells. If you have a vitamin D less than 25, you do not turn on macrophages. And what are those? They are your immune cells. So parts of your immune system do not function when vitamin D is below 25. Do you understand now why somebody who has vitamin D of seven may have an autoimmune condition? Yeah. Does it make sense? So, so many different body systems, even the heart. I was shocked how much research is out there about heart health and vitamin D. It one supplemented a year, a couple years ago. 
So very safe, very effective, part of the fish oil, also can take it on its own. So here's the IFOS, this is the latest one, right? This is actually the first one in 2012, so we have a new one now. But the IFOS shows micro, uh, my, microbiological testing, heavy metal, stability, PCBs, dioxins, disintegration times, and label claim. So here's the Eurofin study. This, start, this test costs us about $3,500. And Eurofins, who's one of the top companies out there that does testing, they're out of Iowa. They said, oh, no one does this test. This is why. It's too expensive. I said, we want it done anyway. You got to run the test. So what they did was they tested over 200 different chemicals, PCBs, dioxins, that could possibly be in there. And this is a whole list, a whole test right here. Passed with flying colors. And then things like arsenic, E. coli, lead, disintegration. You know, we did try to do a 15-minute disintegration. Generally, these are 45 minutes, so you will see some did fail the 15-minute. But fish oil is going to take, you know, usually 30 to 45 minutes to break down. We try to see if we can get them to break down sooner. Okay, so here's a breakdown now of what all this means. We got five stars through the IFOS testing. I think I'm answering your question, right? Okay, when I get to the end, you can ask it, okay? So this past test for all the categories, oxidation levels, PCB levels, dioxin levels, these oils are generated from Canada. So some of the most pristine waters in the world. Process in Canada and ship right into the US. So all the different things are tested. The oil is tested as it goes in. It's tested as it goes out. And we've passed the highest standards in the world for fish oils with a five out of five star rating for IFOS. Here's some of the breakdown of the testing. Again, 450 come in at 503, 330 came in at 368. Here's all the this, um, category two, which is purity, safety, and cleanliness. Category three is stability. Category four is heavy metals. And then of course, the vitamin D. Just in a 10 year period alone, vitamin D levels went down from 45% to 23 percent. So that means less than one quarter of people in 2004 had vitamin D levels that we like them at. Less than 25 percent. I even know in school you need 70 percent, right? 23 percent of the people have high enough levels of vitamin D. Really sad. Problem is what? We don't go outside enough, do we? And living around here, this isn't Florida, California. People out there, they go out a little more, but they're usually covered up or use sunscreen, right? If you wear a sunscreen of 15 or higher, you block 99% of your vitamin D absorption. So you want to use the sunscreen lower and something that's all natural. Plus, where do we make vitamin D? That's where we absorb it. Where do we convert it and make it in the body? Liver. Yeah, my liver. That's what I'm holding, right? I think I'm on the right side. Right? So the liver is where you convert it. A lot of people these days are on things that congest their liver. Alcohol, recreational drugs, prescription drugs. Right? The worst thing is some of the food. Anyone see Supersize Me? If you haven't watched that, write that down. It's a great rental. It's fun. It's educational. You can see Super Size Me is fantastic because they do an experiment on this guy. He does it himself, really. He gets all his tests done before. He's in pretty good shape, about 180 pounds. Decides to go to McDonald's three times a day. And if they ask him to supersize, he has to say what? Yes, right? And by about day 21, when they were monitoring his blood, the woman said, whatever you're doing, you got to stop. You have non-alcoholic, 
fatty liver disease stage one. And that was because of all the bad fats his body were eating that were congesting his liver. It's happened in 21 days. So when people say, well, I don't eat a lot of fast food or I don't go every single day, you know, one day a month may be too much. And when I found out, because you try to eat healthy there sometimes, that's kind of the phases you go through, right? You may eat it at some point, you may try and eat there healthy, then you stop eating it, right? What I found is that if you eat it once in a while, you realize it doesn't really taste that good. Once you get through the addiction part. So he had his non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So you convert the vitamin D in your, from your son and your diet and activate it in the liver. So if you're on a lot of medication, like statin medication, blood pressure, heart, whatever it may be, or you have a fatty liver disease, right? or you just have a lot of body fat, you can be blocking a lot of your vitamin D conversion. So that's why it's so important when you get healthy that your body fat will balance back out, right? A healthy body won't hold all that extra fat. And that's some of the last steps, the refinement process, to refine the oil, ultra refinement. Here's a flow chart. Okay. All right, so that's the first one up, and that's the one I didn't bring. So this is the Omega 3D liquid. That is our flagship formula. This has the triple strength EPA and DHA plus the vitamin D3 and goes through IFOS. The only difference on the liquid and the soft gel is one is put inside of the soft gel, the other one's a liquid. So the liquid would be better if you like doing it that way. But it is an oil. What do oils taste like? Yeah, thick, right? It's more the texture than anything. But we have it in oil, great for kids. And then this is the one I take. I usually take two or four a day. I notice it helps a lot with my joints because I work out and I very rarely will have any joint issues. You know, I get little nicks and pings here and there from working out, but nothing a lot of people uh, are dealing with. And I played sports for a long time, so my body's pretty beat up. Had some accidents, some injuries. So this helps a lot with lubricating the joints and also all the different body systems we showed earlier. So how many of these do you need per day? How many need of these per day? Four. four a day for how long? Four by four, guys. Four by four. That's all you got to remember. It's all fours. It's like when you take the test and it says E all of the above, what's the answer? It's always E. So here it's four by four, right? Four a day for four months to change your oil. Great. So any other questions? Question? What's that? I showed you over 200 PCBs they test for. Yeah. Over 200 different PCBs they tested for. It's right in your handout. Okay, we'll get you one. You guys can get one? You want to take one? Pass it around. Here you go. Thanks, folks. Great questions, Joe. Well, I have. Yeah, probably it's the uh, same concern we have. You want a clean oil, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of stuff they, they found it in the air in Massachusetts. So, you know, th there's toxins everywhere. And you got to do the best you can do. And then we have other things too, like the Amogia Synergy. This one is actually from, contains no fish. So for you, I'd recommend this. This is a three, six, and nine. It has algae in it. It's a great product. And it's like a blueberry uh, swirl. It tastes great. Yeah, I'm not saying, I'm saying I understand that a lot of the fish oil is extracted from the frozen meat and the 
It doesn't matter where you get it from. It has to be processed properly. If it's not, and if you don't third-party test it, you would never know. That's why we process the oil properly, and we send it to your fins for the testing, and that's why I test out. What about krill oils? Anyone take krill? This is from a zoo-like plankton, so they're small, very clean, very easy to take. Also good for brain health, hormones, and migraines. And then we have the Omega EC. What does EC stand for? Extra cool, right? Yes. No, it stands for enterically coated, right? So it means it has a coating on there. You would want to take these if you have a problem with fish oil and it burps up, or you want to address issues with your colon or your lower intestine, because it won't absorb right away. It'll go down further before it's absorbed. EC, enterically coated omega. Okay, you guys were a fantastic group. All right, folks, thanks a lot. We got one more workshop, I think, at 3, and we'll be here tonight till 7.